Um, okay, so we'll move on to our final speaker then, um, Emmeline Boulanger, who is completing her second year of master's in neuroscience at uh, Paris Descartes University in France. She's currently completing a five-month internship with the Canadian Concussion Center and under the supervision of Dr. Charles Tater. It's a very humble bio. Thank you. So, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as I said, I'm Emeline Boulanger. I'm a student from France, and I would like to share with you my five months internship work, which is called um, Highlights of Predictors and Factors that Contribute to the Development of Post-Concussion post Syndrome. So first of all, I would like to give you a little introduction about what is post-concussion syndrome and the current literature on it. So, uh, as you may know now, after a day of conference, uh, post-concussion syndrome are persistent symptoms related to concussion and PCS patients do not recover within the usual time, which means more than uh, 28 days. And PCS is a complex syndrome with a right range of somatic, cognitive, uh, sleep symptoms and many other symptoms like headache, dizziness and many others. So now I would like to talk a little about the current literature on PCS and I would like to um, show you um, this literature uh, about age, gender, number of previous concussion, number of symptoms and type of symptoms. And what is in the literature now about age is that uh, younger are, um, um, the more, the younger you get your concussion, the younger your PCS will stay. And what I would like to say about gender is that in the literature, what, you, what we could find is very controversial because we could find that um, females seem to be more affected by PCS and PCS will stay longer in females than in males. And some other articles said that there is no uh, differences between gender and the duration of PCS. It's the same for the number of previous concussion um, because we could find in the literature that the more um, concussion you get, the longer your post-concussion syndrome will stay, and some other article didn't find any correlation between the number of um, previous concussion and the duration of PCS. Uh, it's the same f sorry, for a uh, number of symptoms and for the type of symptoms, and it's very more complicated for the type of symptoms because some uh, scientists found that uh, some symptoms can lead to a longer PCS. Some others found that symptoms are different between males and females. Some others found no effect of the type of symptoms and the duration of PCS. And some others article found that if you have headache and migraine, it could increase the duration of PCS. So what we do is that we examine PCS in a large number of patients and in the goal to sell the controversy on PCS. So how did we conduct the study? With we did a retrospective study on 833 concussed patients, and we included our patients following this inclusion criteria, which are uh, at least one symptom lasting for more than th three months, because we wanted definite persistent PCS. And we wanted patients with negative uh, CT scan or negative MRI scan, because we wanted to exclude more severe injuries in the goal to achieve more homogeneous population. So that led to the inclusion of 489 patients. So these figures can show you the case selection path. So we see, at, um, we see that at the beginning we, ha we have 833 patient record. We excluded 344 patients that lead to 489 patients. And on our 489 patients, only 56 recovered and uh, 433 33, sorry, do not recover. So now I will move on the result uh, to highlight demographics and predictors of um, PCS. So the first question we ask is how many patients recovered and do not recover? So in our population, we see that the majority of our population do not recover and that only 11.4% uh, of our population recovered. That means one patient on 10. The second question we asked to settle the controversy about PCS is what, sorry, how old are those who recovered and those who did not recover? And what we find is a little bit, 
surprising because we found that our recovered group is significantly younger than uh, the not recovered group. Because in the recovered group, our patients are around 26 years old, and in the not recovered group, they're around 32 years old. So our recovered patients are significantly younger uh, than those who did not recover. The third point I wanted to um, show you is, uh, is there an effect of gender in uh, post-concussion uh, syndrome? And in this graph, we could, sh we could see that um, this is the percentage of included patients that is shown in males and females, and in the not recovered and in the recovered group. And what we could see in this graph is that uh, we have more females than males um, in the not recovered group and less females than males in the recovered group, which could mean that females recover less often than males and seems to be more vulnerable to develop persistent PCS. Um, now I wanted to show you if there is um, how many persisting symptoms do uh, each group have. So this uh, graph shows you again the percentage of included patients and uh, in the x-axis the number of persistent symptoms from 1 to 2, 3 to 7, 8 to 12, 13 to 17 and more than 17 symptoms. And we found any um, differences, uh, significant differences between the recovered and the not recovered room in uh, the term of uh, number of persistent symptoms. So uh, we did not find any link between the number of persisting symptoms and the recovery. And what we did is that we did some uh, correlation statistical tests and we didn't find any correlation between the number of uh, persisting symptoms and uh, the duration of um, PCS. Now let's talk about the type of persisting symptoms and what I would like to show you with this graph is the different type of uh, symptoms, of PCS symptoms you could have and I will just show you the one who appears significantly different between the not recovered and the recovered group and this is the case for uh, balance problem, uh, sensitivity to light, anxiety, sensitivity to noise and head pressure that are more uh, common in the not recovered group than in the recovered group. So balance problem, um, sensitivity to light, anxiety, sensitivity to noise, head pressure seems to be related to the non-recovery from PCS. And this graph is the same, it's just uh, other symptoms. So we found um, some differences between the not recovered and the recovered group for sleep decrease and sadness. So these two other symptoms seem to be uh, related to the non-recovery from PCS. So uh, just to remind you what was the goal of my talk, is what it was to uh, settle the controversy in PCS about age, gender, number of previous concussion, number of symptoms, and type of symptoms. And this is my conclu conclusion slide. I know it's a little bit busy, so I've put some help for you. <laughs> the um, Red Cross meant that our results are different uh, between those in the literature right now, and the um, uh, green um, symbols uh, means that we found something uh, similar of what is in the literature. So, 4H, uh, I don't know if you remember, but our recovered group uh, was younger in, than the not recovered group, which is very different between um, what is in the literature right now because. Um, the younger you get your concussion, the longer your PCS will stay and the less chance you have to recover. So our results about age are very different about what is in the literature right now. Uh, about gender, we found, as in the literature, that females recover less often than males. Um, it's the same for a number of previous concussion. Um, in, the literature, the, in the literature, they are the two... Um, the two versions that uh, the number of previous concussion can uh, lead to a, long, a, a longer persistent PCS and that there is no correlation and we found that we didn't find any correlation uh, between the number of uh, previous concussion and the duration of PCS. We didn't find either a correlation between the number of symptoms and um, the duration of PCS. And for the type of symptom, now we found that some symptoms are more common in the not recovered group than in the recovered group, which means that some symptoms can uh, 
tend to the nut recovery uh, from uh, concussion. Uh, but we didn't find any differences in the recovered and in the not recovered group for um, migraine and headaches, um, and these two symptoms might not impact their recovery. So with our results, we just said that the controversy on PCS continues. And what could be next step? We could make uh, longitudinal studies with a larger number of uh, concussed patients and continue our study with a longer follow-up of the patients. Uh, now, just to finish, I would like to uh, thank Dr. Charlie H. Tedder, which is my internship supervisor here, and also the Canadian Concussion Center that accepted me for my five months internship, and also Paris Descartes University that permit me to come in Canada to do um, this great uh, internship. And it's my turn to thank you for your attention, and if you get any question, just ask me. Thank you. Any questions? I, I, that's fascinating. I'm really, really intrigued by that. Why do you think you've got a different observation on age than, than previous literature? Do you have any suggestions for that? Um, I have to go back to the patient chart to see what could be the explanation of it. Because in my mind, the more concussion you get, the m longer PCS you will have so I have to. It just I just finished uh, my statistical analysis two weeks ago. So it's I have two weeks. That's bags of time. So I have to go back to the patient chart and see if there is some outliers and see what what can be the explanation of it. It's right. fascinating. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. That's helpful. I suppose we have to update the red flags in the MTBI, the uh, ONF MTBI guidelines for the previous number of previous concussions and number of symptoms reported because those are red flags for recovery currently. So do you have any say in whether that's going to change or not? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> um, you might say that recovery, our definition of recovery Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot to tell you that that our, yeah, our definition of the recovery is no, any symptoms, 100 percent recovery. <coughs> yeah. I just had a quick point, a quick question. I was wondering, are you familiar with the 5P study? Uh, it was headed in Ottawa uh, by Dr. Roger Zemek and uh, Keith Yates out in Alberta. It was a Canadian national study across uh, at least 10 or 15 sites, I think, and they had all kinds of measures. As far as I know, it's the largest study on pediatric concussion uh, that's been done in the country, and it demonstrated and recorded, <coughs> pardon me, it, it recorded concussions in like tens of thousands of children over the last several years, and they had neuroimaging and all sorts of that sort of information. So that's great as far as the, the size for the pediatric, and you might be able to look at some of their results to compare with what you've seen on this large scale, which I think is very informative from an epidemiological perspective for us to be able to you know understand these things. And one of the other points I just wanted to make that I found really interesting was that the symptoms that you found to be most related with the uh, with not recovering tend to be what we acknowledge in our clinic at least as being the more actual PCS symptoms, meaning lots of people experience post-concussion syndrome symptoms that do not have PCS, but those ones specifically like light sensitivity and other sensitivities, like th these are ones that we actually consider to be directly related to the concussion. Uh, so I find that interesting that those are the more persisting ones. And in fact, this is what we see in, in the revised versions of the Rivermead uh, post-concussion symptom questionnaire. So great job. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I think we're done. Um, so thanks everybody for uh, hanging on till the bitter end and Dr. Tater is going to come up with some closing remarks but and I would like to thank all of this afternoon's speakers once again and a special thank you to the stringers. So this is going to be extremely brief. 
thank you for coming. Uh, thank you to the to the speakers. Uh, we really had a terrific um, array of uh, concussion research. Uh, it's really I think this was our our best uh, demonstration of uh, brain power uh, applied to concussion research that we've had so far. Um, gratitude to our many sponsors, um, CFL, AA, NFL. Uh, not the NFL, NHL, uh, NHL, PA, OBI, ONF. Uh, we really benefit uh, greatly from your continuing input. Most of those sponsors have sponsored us for years. Um, the keynote speakers were fantastic this year. Willie, uh, you got here um, on time quite miraculously, and we benefited from... Um, all of your great uh, work. Uh, Noah, uh, from the other end of the country, we appreciate your insights. Uh, I have um, uh, a lot of comments that I will make privately to you. Uh, Noah and I are members of a team of co-authors for a paper that we're generating, and we've, we've had some uh, terrific telephone conversations um, Catherine Snedeker, who had to leave, uh, we're very grateful to her for her insights on concussions in women and for ongoing work. Um, we appreciate the stringers coming and speaking. Uh, that was a highlight um, for me and I think for most uh, people here, uh, we really benefited from knowing the effects um, on you. Uh, and Paul Montador, who had to leave, uh, great gratitude to him. Robin and Carmela, you are great chairs uh, to keep us on time and to plan the program so expertly. Um, to um, Lily um, and Richard, other members of our PIs, thank you very much for your input. Um, Mojgan, are you here? Thank you, Mojgan. You work very hard on this. Uh, and I think uh, a lot of the success is due to you. And Kim, are you in the room? Or Kim's team? Uh, Christian, are you still there? If you are, thank you, Christian. He's there. Um, and um, have a safe trip home. Thank you.